Hey, hey, everyone. Selena here, founder, host, lead educator with the American Crochet Association. I'm also sharing this with my friends at Selena Baku Crochet. So if you are watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. And I really want to make this a fun conversation. So if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback about the tip today, about the topic today, just go ahead and post it. And as soon as I see it, especially on the live, I will get to it. All right. I can still get notifications on comments um, for the replay. So even if you're watching this on the replay, it's fine. It's still the same great jam. Come on over. Let's have fun. Okay. So uh, today's Tuesday and I like to do tips on Tuesday because I like alliteration. It's a lot of fun. Helps you remember maybe a little better. Maybe that's how it works for me. Um, and this is an oldie but a goodie. It's a conversation I love having. I feel like I have it a lot in the different crochet communities, just having and sharing uh, different tips to help people become uh, better crochet teachers. So I've distilled down just some really basic tips that I think will help teach crochet in a way that will um, be a less frustrating process, not only for you as a teacher, but for students, and will hopefully just ultimately be a more successful experience, not only for you as a teacher, but for your students as well. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to get to the bottom of, I see quite a few of you guys are here. So, hey, hello. I'm going to give you guys a shout out in just a minute. Um, I'd love to hear how you learned crochet. So maybe in just a few words or a sentence, uh, you know, if you're watching this on the replay, you can hit that pause button and go in ahead and type it in. Um, I'd love to hear how people learned crochet. Did you teach yourself? Did you learn in a group? Did you learn from a friend? Did you learn at school? Um, you know, some people, and I don't get this just because my brain doesn't work this way. Some people teach themselves like with a book or watching a video or something. And, um, me, I need all the help that I can get. Sometimes I need to see something and feel it and touch it and smell it, and you know, breathe it and all of that. Like I just need as many resources as possible. So let's start with that. All right. Uh, now before I dive into this, I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody who's here live. Um, I am streaming this. This is pretty cool. Simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. Pretty cool. Like uh, Leela's here from YouTube. So I can say hey to everybody at the same time. So hey, good to see you here. Aurora's here. Rachel is here. Good to see you. Marsha's here from Illinois. Sherry Richards, two days in a row. I need, I know. Look at me. I'm, I'm back in the back in the swing of it, right? Uh, Aaron Stevens is here. Hey, Aaron, long time no see. So good to see you here. Virginia is here from Texas. I love that. So good. Uh, Marsha says, my mom taught me. Nice. Chandra, hey, hey, good to see you. Aaron says, my aunt in Washington State when I was four, when you were four, you learned to crochet. That's pretty impressive. Hello, Angelica. Always so good to see you. Virginia says, my grandma taught me. Rachel, myself, used YouTube a lot. Man, you know what? I can see that about you, though. You're such a, like, I can just see that you just would get it, right? I can see that about you. You just get things. <laughs> All right, so be thinking about your crochet story. And what I mean by that, again, is how did you learn? What did that look like? Uh, what worked really well? What didn't work? Um, the reason I say let's start with that as crocheters is because I feel that in crochet, maybe in everything, but you know, I'm really just distilling and narrowing this down to crochet. I feel like however we learned, that's how we try to teach. And sometimes for myself included, the way we learned was um, difficult. It was a very difficult process. Maybe there were a lot of pieces missing. Maybe the environment wasn't the best it could be. Maybe the teaching materials wasn't the best it could be. But if we crochet today, we crocheted because we persevered through those difficult situations. Um, and um, so I'm speaking to that today. I kind of, not kind of, I want us to look at those situations that were very difficult and that maybe we're still doing. Um, I'm saying this because so often I see in the crochet space, um, uh, you know, there'll be a person who knows how to crochet and other people are like, oh, you know how to crochet? I want to learn crochet. And of course people, they love it. They want to learn. And oh my gosh, I see it all the time. And then the person who knows how to crochet, they're like, I will teach you. 
And how does it start? It starts by, oh, just, you know, I'll teach you. Just everybody, whoever wants to learn, just come to me. We'll do it together. It'll be fun. Um, we'll, you know, and, and it slowly turns into this kind of like this gathering, right? To where there's like one person who's going to be the teacher. And then, you know, there's a few people and the direction is, hey, just bring yarn, bring whatever you got. I'm going to, you'll learn. It's so easy. I can do, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Once you learn, you can just make anything that you want. Just show up with yarn, show up with materials. I got you. And um, so you, you're a crochet teacher. You're going to have this crochet gathering. You have a few people show up. And here's where I want to read something that I wrote in an article. Um, that I think may resonate with us. Maybe it hits home. You guys, you guys let me know. This, the article is linked in the video description. So definitely take a peek at that. So in this scenario, all right, the teacher is um, going to, to walk around, right, to this room because you're thinking as a crochet teacher that, you know, there's, let's say two, three, four, five, there's six people in the room that all want to learn crochet. And they all come with completely different materials, completely different projects. And so you're going to give specific guidance about the next steps in that half finished project someone brought, because I guarantee you someone showed up with a pattern and a project that they started and they're like, well, I'm on round three and I don't know what to do next. So you're going to read and decipher that pattern for them to give them the next steps. And then you're going to go to the next person. You're like, oh, okay, you really are a beginner. Okay. Um, yeah, let me show you how to do the slip knot just so you can attach the slip knot to the to your hook so you can start doing things. Okay, so you spend a few minutes with that person doing that. And then you go to the next person because the next person brought a project and it's a scarf that they made when they were young because a friend or family member taught them when they were a child, but the, the ends are all wonky. And they're like, "What? well, this is what I made and I don't know what stitch it is and I don't really know what it is. I use it as a scarf, but I'm not really sure. But this, the sides are all wonky. And, and why is that? So you're explaining why the stitch count matters and what counts as a stitch and what doesn't and what you're telling them what stitch they're using. And then there's still one person. That's probably the first hour right there. And there's still one person sitting there with yarn and a hook going, well, I'm just waiting for my turn because I don't, I came here to learn crochet, but I'm just, you know, waiting for my turn. So in short, and, and tell me if you've ever been in a situation like that, maybe you've taught in a situation like that, or maybe you participated in a situation like that in your learning process. But in short, this might be a fun social gathering for some, and you might learn a few things. You might learn one or two things. You might learn from other people. You might make some great friends there, but this is definitely not a situation that is going to give crochet lessons to everyone. It absolutely is not. Now, a lot of people are going to argue with me on this because maybe one or two from this particular scenario, they're going to persevere, right? Because if you're here and you're watching and you crochet, we persevered. We, pers we pushed through that. We just got it. We kept going. So we are the people who persevered, right? And we got past that initial gathering, that initial, I don't know what that was, but I learned, right? I just, I found a book or I went to YouTube or I just kept doing it and I just got it. Some of us are going to grasp it, but the majority of people in that situation, they're going to give up. They're going to be like, well, I don't know what I learned and what I didn't learn, but I, you know, that it took a really long time. I was there for a long time and everyone got such un individual undivided support that I didn't really learn anything. So again, some people are going to walk away with tips and tricks, but that wasn't really a beginner crochet lesson. It was a social gathering where the theme might have been crochet, but it kind of fell short from there. So I feel like in the crochet world, maybe we've all been in situations like that because crochet is something that we love. It's something that we cherish. It's something that is social for us. And what I love about crochet is that I think a lot of crocheters don't mind sharing. They don't mind teaching. Like when someone is excited about crochet, they're like, oh, I'll totally help you. And then it's like, well, yeah, the more the merrier. We could all do this. It's easy for me because I persevered and I've been doing it so long that of course it's going to be easy for you. But I feel like the thing that we're missing here is that we persevered. I know I've said that 10 times, but to persevere means that you've pushed through obstacles. You, you know, even though there wasn't a next step for you, you found out what that next step could be and you worked past it. So after
after having quite a few scenarios where I've created that exact teaching environment, I was like, this is not a good teaching environment. This is a social gathering. It was fun for some, but I definitely was not giving crochet lessons. So after a very long time, after a few decades in the crochet world, I've learned some things that don't work. I've learned some things that do work really well. And so I'm here to kind of pass along some of those tips. I just have three tips today and I want to go through each one. So I see quite a few of you guys are still joining and sharing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get through some of these tips. Um, and then I'm going to share some resources with you. And then I'm going to go through and see who's here and what you guys are saying, because I see that there really are a lot of great conversations in the comments. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. All right. So let's kind of get through it. All right. Because I really, I want this to be a deeper conversation. So, so let's get into it. So three tips, how to teach crochet, how to effectively give crochet lessons. Here they are. These are my tips based on my my years of experience. Tip number one, private lessons. This is it. It starts with private lessons. Now, when I say private lessons, I mean there is one teacher and the ratio for student to teacher should be one to one or one to two. Um, now, some people may go, well, I've had three. Well, I've had four. Well, I've had five. Well, I've had six students. And again, it goes back to that group mindset. That is not going to work every single time. Do, do is there one out of every thousand of you guys who has a success story and well i give i give beginner crochet lessons with a group of five or six do they all learn to crochet and do they all come back i guarantee you they don't they don't if you want to pass crochet on and if people want to learn crochet it has to be that one to one or one to two ratio and when i say learn to crochet that means as as li they know as little about crochet as never even picking up a crochet hook before to maybe they've worked a few stitches but they don't know what they don't know those are beginners so beginners means that you are teaching them the foundations of crochet and that takes a lot of skill and ability you're doing things with your hands and your brain that you've probably never done before you are making fabric with yarn and both of your hands have to work together and it is awkward you're learning new stitches and techniques and ways to do things that it takes a lot of time and effort for people to adopt and learn. And the best way to do that is with that really small private setting. Now, there's a huge difference between beginner crochet lessons and crochet workshops. Those things are totally different. A crochet workshop is uh, where people already know how to crochet, but they either want help with making a very particular project or learning very specific techniques. They no longer need that hand-holding of walking through every single stitch and every single step of a process. They've already learned the basics of crochet, and now they're ready in a group setting to learn a little bit more with little guidance, not a lot. So that's where we're, we really need to separate beginner crochet lessons and workshops, all right? So if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback about that, let me know, okay? All right, tip number two, and again, these are just three tips on how to better teach crochet. Tip number two is provide the materials. Uh, now, I say this because, again, before, remember, I was giving you guys that party scenario. Come on over, everyone. I'll teach you to crochet. Just, you know, bring whatever materials you have. Go to the store, pick out your favorite yarn, pick, out, pick it out, right? And I will totally teach you. That's not going to work for everyone. Um, you know, again, you know crochet, you understand crochet. That means you have an understanding of yarn and hook and how to read a yarn label and what's going to, you know, what, what materials, what yarns are going to create materials that are going to help you learn. A beginner, you don't know what they know and don't know. So it's best to assume that they probably don't have a wide understanding of yarn and, and, and anything like that. So you don't want to throw all that stuff on their shoulders. And you also don't want to, um, you don't want to overwhelm them or or start them off in a place that they're going to feel upset and going to feel failure. Yarn is exciting. Yarn is probably one of the main reasons people even want to learn crochet. Um, some people come into crochet just because they found beautiful yarn somewhere. Just because it's beautiful and just because it's amazing and you love it and you want to make something with it, that may not be the best material to help you learn crochet. Um, maybe it's a thick, thin yarn. Maybe it's a thread. Maybe it's a weight five. 
Maybe it is a marled yarn with a bunch of different colors that it's gonna be difficult to see stitches and see the fabric. So there's a number of reasons why the material that your student chooses to learn crochet may not actually help them learn to crochet. So my suggestion is whenever you're providing materials for a beginner, start with the same things that you would, you know, um, give a child as they're learning to write. Whenever a child is learning to write, you give them really big crayons and like a big white piece of paper. And that way it's like, oh, now I can clearly see what I'm doing, right? And I'm just gonna maybe just scribble on here and just kind of get a feel for how this crayon fits in my hand. It's kind of the same concept. Some people adopt it a little more easily than other people. Sometimes that hook feels more comfortable in, in a hand than other people. Some people are like, this just feels like I'm blindfolded or learning a new language. Sometimes it's really difficult and awkward. So get a bigger hook than even the yarn calls for and start with even a bigger yarn. So a really uh, a thicker, a bigger, a denser weight four, even a weight five yarn, somewhere around there. Something that's gonna be bigger and thicker to where they can clearly see the yarn and where, as, they're, as they're working up um, their first stitches, I'll talk about that in a minute, they can very clearly see where the hook goes, what a stitch looks like. They're going to be able to learn the, the anatomy of that stitch, and they're going to be able to clearly see what they're doing, what they've created, and to count what they've done. Because counting and um, recognition and stitch anatomy, that's a huge part of learning crochet. Arguably, that's most of what you should be learning whenever you're learning to crochet, because if you can do that on a really small scale fundamental level, then you're, you're not going to struggle with larger, more complex designs or more complex stitch repeats or pattern repeats or things like that, because you're going to understand at a fundamental level what it is that you're creating. So you pick out the yarn, you pick out the hook, get like a weight four or weight five yarn, economical economical. You don't want to get anything fancy. You don't want to get anything that's expensive. You want to get something that they're going to use a lot of to learn the repetition of crochet for them to get it comfortable in their hands. And use a hook, a hook size, maybe even one larger than what the, the, the yarn calls for. So let's say that, you know, you're using weight four, or weight five yarn. Um, maybe even use like an I or a J hook, you know, something that's going to create maybe a looser fabric. And that way they're not fighting with it. Because at that point, you're really just trying to get them comfortable with holding yarn, holding hook, making fabric. That's all they're getting comfortable with. So when you provide those materials, it helps with that process. It's one less thing they have to think about. All right, tip number three. This is the best tip, my favorite tip, I don't know, they're all kind of important, but I love this one because I feel like it's very controversial. I feel so many people have opinions on what a first project should be in crochet. So if you have an opinion on when you're teaching crochet, what should the first thing be that people crochet? What should it be? Before I, before I really talk about it, just go ahead and throw your answer in the comments because I'd love to see that. If you are like, well, I teach crochet and it should be this, or if I was gonna teach crochet, it'd be that. Or when I learned crochet, it was this. Um, just for an example, when I learned how to crochet, uh, one of the first projects I made, I still have it just as a reminder. Uh, I was in like, uh, I was five years old and we were doing a, a play, Billy Goats Gruff. Billy, Billy Goats, Billy Goats Gruff, yeah. And uh, I was one of the billy goats and my teacher was were like, we're all going to crochet our horns. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking, but I, I, I kind of want to call that my first project. But I, you know, I can see the stitches and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I made five of these. And my teacher made all the other stitches because I had no concept of what I was doing. My other first project as a five year old was a case for my flute or recorder in school kind of looks like it, but not really. Another first project was granny squares. And that's when I really kind of understood uh, crochet. So those were my first projects learning. So if you guys, you know, throw that in the comments, I'd love to see it. So what I think and what I'm sharing as a successful way to, to pass crochet on, to have a more successful experience is to start with the basic crochet stitches. And when I say the basic crochet stitches, first you're learning how to hold the hook and then you're learning how to hold the yarn and then you teach them a slip knot. And sometimes that's kind of even a struggle. 
and then you are teaching them how to chain. Now, some people will stop there and go, okay, great, now chain a thousand. I think it's a mistake to do that because it's not necessarily helping them learn fabric. It's not helping them learn stitch anatomy or recognition. And people can give up. It's not really very fun to just kind of chain a hundred or a thousand. So you may go, well, I really saw this blanket on Pinterest and I thought that's what we were going to be making at my first crochet lesson. So you telling me to just chain a thousand, it deters me. So maybe I'm not going to go back for my second or third lesson. So start with the chain stitch, but do it on a really small scale. Chain 11, fasten off. Okay, now let's learn another stitch. Every time you fasten off and start again, it teaches you everything in the steps that you've already learned. So slip knot, hold your, hold your hook, hold your yarn. Now we're going to learn the half double crochet stitch. So what are we gonna do first? We're gonna chain 11 or 12. Okay, now we're going to learn the half double crochet. So here are the teaching points that we're going to make. Here's where you place your stitches. Here's how you, this is where you place your hook. And now let's just do, let's learn the half double crochet. Let's do 10 stitches by 10 rows. Now let's fasten it off. Okay, that's your first lesson. And your first uh, homework for lesson one is I want you to make five of these. Or just focus on work, you know, just crochet 15 minutes a day. It depends. Everyone's, you know. Let's see how comfortable you are actually working this up or making one swatch a day. So making one half double crochet stitch swatch, 10 stitches by 10 rows and doing that for five days, five out of seven days. You want to give people um, something to be excited about, really small action steps. That way, if they get stuck or they have questions, they can reach out to you. It's not so big and so daunting that they just go, oh my gosh, I'm just going to give up. When you tell people to chain a thousand, it's like, well, that's not very fun because then it's like, okay, well, I'm working on my chain some more. They could be repeating bad habits. They could be repeating uncomfortable ways to hold the hook and yarn. And they're not really looking at what they're doing or paying attention. So things can kind of get twisted and they're not really learning what they know or what they don't know. Same thing with the half double crochet stitch. I mentioned earlier the crochet learning party. There's always that one person who comes up and go, well, I learned this one stitch and they told me to just keep going. So maybe it started out with, uh, you know, a stitch count of 10 or 20 or 30. And they're like, just keep going until you're done. And they didn't really learn a lot about stitch counting or anatomy or anything. And that's why it looks a little wonky. And also, if you're giving them a project that never ends, what are they coming back to? That's not really very fun for most people. So doing 10 stitches by 10 rows and they fasten off. Then they're practicing the slip knot, the chain, work, you know, working those stitches, counting those stitches, working those rows, counting those rows, fastening off. And by the fifth time they make that swatch, the sixth time they make that swatch, and they can look back at all the swatches they've made, they can see their progress. And seeing the progress and seeing how you've already done things better, that's so motivating for people. And then they're going to want to come back for their next lesson. So from there, the next lesson should be learning the double crochet. And again, here's another one of those controversial things that I say that people are like, that makes no sense. You're going to end by teaching them the single crochet. A lot of times people, even people who teach crochet, they're like, I'm going to teach you crochet. We're going to start with the single crochet. I think that's a massive mistake for a few reasons. First and foremost, the single crochet is the smallest stitch, which is why so many people go, well, it's the smallest stitch. It takes the least amount of action. So that's why you do that first, chain single crochet. Arguably, even with a bigger yarn and a bigger hook, it's such a small stitch that for beginners, it's very difficult to see that stitch, not only individually, but to count it or even identify the anatomy. So again, I have taught dozens and dozens and dozens of people how to crochet And when I first started my professional career of teaching, I noticed that starting with a single crochet, a lot of people just weren't coming back. It wasn't very motivating. They didn't want to do it. It's a very tight stitch. It curls. And that really makes people feel self-conscious, like they're not doing it right. And it feels very monotonous. There's not really a whole lot to see. So whenever you start with the half double crochet, there's just enough motions in it that they're learning how to do the yarn over and they're learning a lot of that uh, work that goes into creating taller stitches. So really it's that great middle point to move on to the double crochet 
And then when you come back to the single crochet, you've already learned a few stitches to where even though it is a small dense stitch, you're probably gonna be able to identify it better, not only individually, but to count it in rows. So I think the single crochet is the most difficult stitch for that reason. It's so small and it's so dense that you save that one for last. So those are my three teaching tips. Tip number one in order, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, so much reading. Give private lessons. Let me know what you think about that. If you think uh, good, bad, happy, or sad, love to hear it. Tip number two, provide the materials. You start with a larger yarn, a larger hook, even the hook being a little bit larger than the yarn is. Uh, go with a light colored yarn that is um, that is a single color, uh, something that's going to be really easy to see and count and identify and provide those materials. Very important. Tip number three, start with the stitches. And those stitches are going to be brought out over more than one lesson. Don't jam all the stitches into one lesson. Um, you know, start with the chain stitch and the half double crochet. That can be lesson one. Lesson two can be the double and the single stitch. So there you have it. Those are my three tips. I have a ton more. Uh, I have so much more information on how to teach. And I do have a resource for you guys. So if you're interested, I'm going to pop this link in the comments. It's a $14 toolkit. It covers all of the stitches, not only in written form, there are linked video resources that you and your students can use. Uh, and every single pattern comes with a chart, a diagram. So not only can you read how instructions are followed, but you can show them not only with a picture of the finished project, but also with a chart. So it is every pattern that you need to teach crochet, not only the stitches, but how to work in rows, how to work in tubes, and how to work in joined rounds. Um, and it's only 14 bucks. So again, I'm going to throw that in the comments, and that way you guys can see it. And if you guys want more than just the patterns, I have an entire crochet instructor training program. It gives you every single thing that you need to know to be a crochet instructor. It goes ex in extensive detail about private crochet lessons, what a client journey is, how to get students coming back so they can actually follow through and learn the basics of crochet. What are the basics of crochet? How many lessons should a student have? How long should each lesson be? What is a teaching environment? Templates, forms, uh, how to teach. So all of the different um, uh, lessons that you have with a student, what the teaching objectives are, you know, how to make sure that your student is satisfied and understands after every single lesson and how to follow up with them. So I'm going to post this in the comments too, but just know that I have tons of resources no matter what you want to do in the crochet world to help teach crochet. I've got a resource for you. Okay. Uh, but before we get into all of that, now the floor is open for questions, comments, feedback. Let's make this a fun conversation. Angelica, uh, it's, I just have to say hi to you twice. So that's why I threw your name up here. It looks like Nisi is here from Ohio. It looks like Erin is still here. Chandra, my grandma tried and I didn't get it. Years later, my aunt showed me and I immediately learned. Yeah, sometimes it's age. Sometimes it's like, you know, there isn't really a right age to learn crochet. It's really all about, you know, am I interested? Can I sit still? Am I, you know, do I want to practice? So sometimes it's like, yeah, I learned it four, I learned it five. I think Aaron just said recently that Aaron learned it four. I learned it five. Some people learn very young. Some people are like, I tried to learn it four or five, but I didn't really get it till 11. So I think that there's a lot of different, um, uh, you know, reasons maybe we did or didn't learn. And so that's why it's so important to me to just go, here's some tips. Here's, here's maybe a path forward if you want to teach. Uh, based on all of my failures and successes, this is what I think could work best for everyone. Nisi, I learned from my college roommate, taught me the single crochet, then use books and YouTube for everything else. Leela, I read a pattern and crocheted one of the lacy collars using number 10 variegated crochet thread. I love that this is an, an example of someone who persevered. Like you taught yourself and you did something extremely difficult with thread. Just because you can do it, Man, you are like, that's, that is the exception, not the rule. So I love seeing stories like this because I think Leela, that is commendable. That's amazing. But that is absolutely not a good way to go. I'm going to teach you how to crochet. This is how I learned. This is what we're going to do. It just is not going to be a great experience for most people. 
Uh, so thank you for sharing that. And that's, that's my two cents on that. Aurora, I learned to make chains from my neighbor. Then I learned from magazines. Brenda, I taught myself crochet from a book as well as knitting. Uh, my grams had me playing with yarn and knitting needles until I was five. Sherry, my grandma got me started when I was about seven years old. After that, it was books pre-internet. Yeah, I also learned pre-internet. So I was really stunted in my crochet growth for a really long time until um, I turned to the internet for the resources. And man, just the things that I've learned, just the things that I picked up and learned have been fantastic. So there really is a wealth of information and resources out there. And sometimes that wealth of resources information can be overwhelming. Like I said, sometimes people want to come to crochet because they saw something beautiful on the internet and they're inspired. They're like, oh man, I want to make this blanket for, you know, I'm going to have a baby soon. Or I saw this crochet bag on Pinterest. I want to make this. And I love when people want to come to crochet because they found something that they love and want to create. And that's why I think it's so important to give everyone an equal foundation. Let's learn these basics. Let me show you and help you understand what it means to crochet. And that way you can crochet anything you want. You won't feel stunted and you won't need me to help you through every step of the process because I persevered and, you know, I just through experience, I have this wealth of knowledge. You know, I don't want to be the expert or the guru for someone. I want to pass on everything that I've learned in a way that, um, you know, my students can do more and better than I can. Shadowlands Farm. Oops, Deb from Maine. I taught myself with YouTube and a lot of frustrating ripping out. Yeah. Aurora, I have a hard time with diagrams, but love to read instructions from books. Um, I actually learned to crochet by sight first. So it was just someone saying, here, do this, make goat horns, here, do this, make a recorder case, here, do this, make a granny square. And that was the entirety of my instructions. And so again, I persevered. I had yarn and hook at home. So here I was this kid going, what else can I do with this? And I would just play with yarn and hook, not even really knowing what I was doing, had no idea. Uh, Then in high school, I learned to read diagrams. So it was diagram only. So I learned what all the different characters were and how to follow it and how to read it. And then way later on in life, when I was like, you know, mid 20s, that's when a friend of mine was like, and here's how to read written instructions. So if anything, I feel like I learned very backwards. I was a very long, hard uphill climb for me. Leela, I now watch videos and read patterns, uh, attempting to learn to follow charts. That's a challenge. Uh, Even if you're trying to teach yourself, you know, if you're like Leela and you're trying to teach yourself crochet, um, you know, maybe you don't need a teacher. Maybe you feel you know enough to know um, if you could just follow the right instructions or resources, or if you just had the correct path, you could teach yourself. This resource can also be for you. So if you want to start out with this crochet lesson toolkit, I mean, this is exactly everything that you need to know to learn what stitch counting is, learn what stitch anatomy is, uh, learn how to follow crochet written instructions and charts. And that way, when you learn that foundation, you can go on to crochet anything that you want. So definitely check that out. Aaron says, the hardest part was I believed I learned UK terms instead of US terms uh, for crochet and knit. So I had to relearn. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, I feel that that's a point that maybe it's not, it's not as prevalent. It's not as clear. So yeah, we're creating the same stitches in the same fabric in US and UK standards. We're creating the same thing. But U.S. terms are different than U.K. terms. So we're creating the exact same stitch, but we're calling them completely different things. So if you don't know that there's a difference, if you know U.S. terms and standards and you're following a U.K. pattern, you don't know it's a U.K. pattern, then maybe you're like, oh, okay, single cro- work one single crochet into the next 15 stitches. Well, a single crochet in U.S. standards is single crochet, but in U.K. standards, a single crochet is actually like is it a double or a half double? I forget. I'm not up to speed on the the difference between US and UK. I got a resource for that so I can show you guys. But yeah, so you're completing, you're working completely different stitches. So that's an important tip to learn too. Janet is here from Missouri. Brenda says, it's not like I made anything that young. I just played like I was making something. Oh, I lost her when I was five. So as a kid, I kept trying to teach myself. Oh man, I know it's hard to I, I love that we we pass crochet through the generations. Um, I love that so much. Um, 
And, and sometimes it's like what we're passing on is the entirety of what we know. And sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Or sometimes, you know, we, the person who taught us in our family, maybe we don't live near them or we lose them before we can really learn everything. So yeah, that's difficult, Brenda. I, I, I hear you. Angelica says, I learned in school the very basics, but my grandmother and mom knitted mostly and crocheted sometimes. Leela, I'm also wanting to learn to calculate stitch multiples for the pattern repeat. Uh, well, come on over and join the, the learning path at the American Crochet Association. It's part of the crochet membership. So join the crochet membership. It gives you a foundation of everything that you need to know in crochet, including stitch multiples, not only in rows, but in the round. So if you want to understand what a stitch multiple is and how to recreate it, crochet membership. I'll hook you up. Very good information in there. Angelica says, but reading a pattern, definitely from you and the ACA. I know you were just saying this the other day that you didn't know how to read patterns until you joined the crochet membership and took our pattern reading class. So, um, you know, shout out to that. And thanks for sharing. Uh, Chandra, thank you so much. Chandra says, uh, share to my group of Florida crocheters. Yeah. If you guys uh, have a crochet group and you feel that this would be a helpful resource for them, go ahead and hit that share button. Um, because these links are going to be there. So that way everyone can see this. I'm sharing an article with all the information that I shared in my talk today. And I'm also going to share that link to the crochet lesson toolkit. So just the patterns that you need to teach. And if you want the entire crochet instructor training program, the who's, the what's, the why's, the where's, and when's, then I have information on that too. So thank you, Chandra. I hope that they enjoy it. And if anybody has any questions, let me know. Aaron says, I have had every person start at the beginning, regardless if they know it already or not. That's, that's interesting. I'm glad that you said that. So with the crochet instructor training program, uh, some of this is about how to assess your student. Oh, your face is so big. Nobody can see. Or there, I got it so big. So part of giving beginner crochet lessons is assessing the needs of your students. So understanding what that even means. So remember I said there's a difference between private lessons and workshops. So if someone comes to you and they say, I want to learn crochet, I already know the basics. And you're like, what do you think the basics are? So there's a way to test people to see what their level of knowledge is, because there's literally a checklist of lesson one in a beginner crochet setting, you should be able to understand and do this. Can you do those things? And if they can, then you can move on to lesson two. And there, again, there's a checklist. Can you do this? Do you know this? Can you recreate this? So if they're not checking those boxes, then yeah, you know exactly where to place them in terms of your lesson syllabus. So I'm glad that you said that, Erin, because I think that everyone does need that foundation of crochet. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Sometimes we think we know more than we do. There are people that have been crocheting for a hundred years and they're like, I know everything. And then they go and they look at this information. They're like, actually, I know how to crochet an afghan with a shell stitch. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. There's more to do in crochet. So again, sometimes the length of time that we put into crochet, people equate that to expertise. And that's not at all true. Because again, maybe you've been crocheting for 100 years because, and you've made 10,000 shell stitch baby blankets, but your stitch counts are still incorrect. You're still using double crochet instead of half double crochet, things like that. So because we don't know what we don't know, there's a foundation. And I think that it's a good place to start. Janet says, being taught one-on-one uh, -on -one made the difference for me. Then I found one of your books. Ooh, which book did you find? I'd love to hear. But yeah, I think that having one-on-one -on -one lessons, again, especially for a beginner, um, you want to keep the lesson time to a minimum. Again, this is a physical and mental activity. It's tiresome. So even though you can crochet all day, every day, you're like, I could crochet for six hours. You don't want to have a beginner first lesson that's six hours because you had six people show up because that's just exhausting. That means you probably are only going to have one person follow up for lesson two. So again, keeping the le keeping beginner lessons really small, that one-on-one -on -one to one-on-two, -on -two, and I go into this in great detail in the crochet instructor training program, uh, keeping that lesson to an hour and a half or less, that is the crucial window of time for someone to really effectively learn exactly what they need to learn so that they can go home and practice exactly what they need to practice. People want quick wins. People want to know where they're at and where they're going. So keeping that window down to 90 minutes or less 
that can make a huge difference. And that's not going to happen if you have more than two students for one teacher. Aurora says, like you said, smaller groups on 101 is better. Yes, I absolutely agree. Hello, Angela. Good to see you. Brenda says, learned in summer school sewing. Uh, Adoma, wow, I'm enjoying this and learning a lot. I'm so glad. Leela, my first project was made with variegated number 10 crochet thread. And yes, absolutely. And I loved that. I read that earlier and I use it as an example. I love that example. Uh, Dawn Tennyson is here. Hey, Dawn, so good to see you. Dawn, I think she's answering the question of what the first project was. And for, for Dawn, it was Granny Squares. Okay, I'm getting into the first project. I love how many comments there are here. Keep those coming. Uh, so we're getting into what the first thing is that you learned. And for Aaron, it was a swatch. Aurora, a small doily. Oh my gosh. Uh, Leela, I totally agree with your first two tips. Glad to hear that. Thank you so much. Tara says, everyone told me granny squares. I don't care for them at all and dove right into making hats. I know for the longest time, and I still feel like nine times out of 10, depending on when you learned crochet, so many people are like, you want to learn crochet? We're going to make a granny square. And again, we're just teaching what we were taught. So maybe that was their first crochet lesson. So they're thinking, you're going to learn so much. You're going to learn a granny square. And folks, I have a whole other article I could talk all day about how a granny square is a terrible first lesson for beginners. Not everyone's going to grasp it. There's a lot going on there. You're not like you're it's uh, another day, another time. Terrible first lesson. Uh, Janet learned with chains and then single crochet. Dawn says my first project was with thread and a tiny hook pineapple design and read the crochet. Uh, no chart great aunt taught me. Oh my goodness. That's again, you persevered, my friend. That is your magician. <laughs> Not everyone can do that. Leela says, I also agree with teaching them to crochet something, a dishcloth, a bath cloth or something. I think that's interesting. And I think that I agree with you. I think that you, sh I think that people, whenever they're learning something, they, they want to feel like they're making something. They want to feel like they have learned to do something. However, I do think it's a mistake to dive right into a project. Like, I'm going to teach you crochet. We're going to make a washcloth. I think it's a mistake because there's too many other elements that go into a finished project. So that's why it's so important to say your first projects will be these swatches. So again, I go into this in extensive detail in the crochet instructor training program, but I think it's great to have a visual to show people exactly what they're going to learn. And that way they can see what they're working towards. So a first lesson can be, here are the chains you're going to make. Here are the half double, like this is what you're going to learn first. Here are the stitches. This is what they look like. So this is what you're going to do first. And when you can do this, then you're going to move on. And here are the projects we're going to make. So just as an example, uh, you know, in your first lesson, you'd probably show up with all of these. But you're going to say, all right, first, guys, we're going to make swatches. So those swatches are going to look like this. You're going to you're going to learn the foundations of crochet, the chain, the half double, the double, and the single. This is exactly what they look like. And then after those, those are your first two lessons. And after those, you're going to learn how to work in rows. And you're going to learn a lot more than that. But we're going to make a washcloth. Then you're going to learn how to make tubes. So a tube is a one-step further from a row, and we're going to learn how to make this cozy. And then you're going to learn how to work in joined rounds, and we're going to make this drink tote. So you are going to give them projects, but you're not starting off the bat with a project. They're going to be, there's just going to be far too many questions, and mainly the questions they're going to have is about stitch counting, stitch recognition, and just not being it like, why am I, what is this? You're packing too much into something. Even if it's just a half double crochet washcloth, I feel like you're leaving them with far too many questions than answers. Dawn says, taught my cousin, made pot scrubbies with single crochet. Angelica says, great tips. Aurora says, great tips. Thank you. Hello, Jerry Sue Tinker. Always so good to see you. June Marshall, hello, hello. Angela says, your teaching style is very clear and thorough. Love the ACA. Thanks for the shout out. I'm so happy to hear it. Aurora learned in their teens. Erin says, my 20-month-old daughter is trying. Oh, that's so sweet. She has already a good hook movement and holding. She gets mad because she wiggles a hook in the yarn and nothing happens. That's really sweet. It sounds like, it sounds like uh, you know, I know that crochet is a huge part of your life. And it, if she sees you doing it and she wants to, she's primed 
to, uh, you know, to get there. So keep us posted with that. I'd love to hear. Christine says, hello from Michigan. Leela, girl, I agree with you on your thoughts on my learning experience. I gave up crochet for 39 years after that collar. Oh my gosh. I, you know, and again, can people crochet anything? Yeah. Can a person pick up a hook and, and, and make their own pineapple lace wedding gown? Absolutely. I'm not saying it's impossible. But what I am saying is that it's not a fair learning experience for everyone. So when you start with things that aren't the fundamentals, people are just going to have far too many questions. I love analogies and I love food. So I like to use a lot of food analogies. So think about it this way. When you're learning crochet or teaching crochet in either experience, think about it like someone is learning to cook, right? So when you've got, let's just, let's, for all argument's sake, someone goes, man, I really want to learn how to cook. My goal is I want to make Thanksgiving dinner. Do you start with Thanksgiving dinner? Do you start with showing them, okay, we're going to get together and day one, we're going to make a roast turkey, mashed potatoes. We're going to make a green bean casserole from scratch. And we're going to learn how to make cranberry sauce. Those are, we're just, there's the four things, just the basics, right? So, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to use this. Tur- Why are we using that? Tur- we'll, we're just going to, there, we, we have too much, to, we have too much to get through. I can't answer those questions. So when we're doing that, if you choose a project that your student isn't ready for, that's what's going to happen. When someone goes, I want to make a sweater, I want to make a blanket, and they choose something that has like stitch repeats or, um, you know, specialty techniques or specialty stitches or color changing, or if they choose a yarn that, that is variegated, that's hard to decipher stitch counting and repeats, all you're, you're packing too much into a single lesson when they're like, I can't even hold my hook. <laughs> what? So it can be too much for some. It really can. Angelica, I learned different stitches from YouTube and made some baby hats like that, but really got serious into it when I saw one of your videos on YouTube. Well, thank you, Angie. You're really becoming a poster child for the ACA. I love it so much. Marcia says, my mom taught me to read patterns and the stitches when I was a child. I understood the concept of charts, but they are a challenge maybe for me. That's what you're trying to say. I totally hear you. Um, that's why... I, I, you know, because everyone learns differently, myself, especially, I need more than one type of resource resource. So that's why it was so important for me to put together this crochet toolkit and this training program that incorporates all those different resources. So for every single pattern that teaches crochet, there are written instructions, there is a video tutorial for the stitches. um, And then there is a chart. And then there is a picture of the finished project. And that way you can clearly see what it is that you're trying to make. And that way maybe the written instructions don't click, but the picture and the chart kind of helps make sense. And then the video tutorial, you go, oh, that's where my hook goes, or that's what it should look like. So that's why I incorporate so many different resources into this training program. Janet, I want to get better at reading written instructions and learning diagrams. Then you, if you can teach yourself, this could be a really good resource for you as well. Or again, at the American Crochet Association, no matter what you want to do, whatever your crochet goal, we've got a resource or a lesson or a class for you. So if you want to learn crochet, we have a Learn to Crochet series. You should check it out. Erin, it's actually one stitch difference. U.S. double crochet is UK treble. Is that what it is? Okay. I just, it wasn't fresh in my mind and it's not something I convert often. So I, I think that you are right. I think it is just one stitch difference. I think that you're right. Ola Joe, Hi, Selena. I'm so happy to catch you live. Greetings from Jersey. It's good to see you again. I know usually I see you on YouTube, so it's, it is good to see you here. Uh, oh, and you've got friends here. Janet Roberts is saying hey to you. Shows shout outs to friends in the, in the comments. Aaron says it was specifically beginners only uh, about a comment that you made earlier. Dawn, tension was the hardest for me. So been practicing for 50 years and I'm still learning and I love it. Yeah. And I think that that's one of those points that I was trying to make earlier about, you know, teaching crochet. You know, when you know crochet and when you crochet and it's part of your life and people are like, wow, you crochet, I want to learn. You know, sometimes we forget how many hours we've put into what we're doing and the things that we had to learn and pick up as we went. Because just holding a hook and yarn, man, that can be the most awkward thing for people. And maybe it was for you as well. So just making time for that alone 
can be the most important step in introducing people to crochet. Some people pick it up very naturally, but for some people that they may just need a lot of extra time and support and practice towards just that alone. So making time and space for that, um, for people to practice, that's going to help make them feel um, like they've been properly introduced to crochet. You don't want to make it a daunting experience and they just feel like, well, I can't do it. You don't ever want them to feel that way. Hello, Elaine. Good to see you. I love all your memes. They are so spot on. I love sharing crochet memes on our Facebook page. And, you know, I feel like if any of them resonate to you, that's that's how you come on over. That's how you get to know, like, and trust the ACA. So I'm glad you like the memes. Uh, Barb. Barb says, uh, I learned from my aunt when I was eight. She crocheted so many beautiful things. She taught me the basic chain and single crochet. The first, I the rest I learned from books. I taught my daughter when she was eight. I read patterns, but have trouble with diagrams, but still trying. We have all the resources for you. So if there's anybody here who wants to learn how to read patterns, wants to learn how to read diagrams, or just wants to better their crochet knowledge, skill, and ability, again, this can be a great resource for you, this crochet toolkit, or again, we have a learn how to crochet series and you can, as you watch it, you can kind of assess like, I know that I need to work on that. I know that. Oh, I should work on that. So definitely check that out. Marge, my neighbor who was a home economics teacher taught me how to crochet. I started with making a rectangle and sewed it into a pocketbook and added a strap. That's clever. Leela, I really had not thought about teaching the single crochet stitch last, but I cannot agree more. The half double crochet stitch is my favorite. Yeah, I, I, you know, of the three, the half double is probably my favorite too. But uh, again, I have taught so many dozens and dozens of people. And with every single student, especially if there was a struggle, I was like, how can I make this better? And for the longest time, I thought I'm going to teach stitches. When I decided to teach stitches first, I was like, let's teach them in order. That makes perfect sense. Why would I do it any other way? You know, it's the chain, the single, the half double, then the double. And so many people struggled with the single for the reasons that I outlined. And that's when I was like, how do I make this different? Let's start with the half double. It's a good in-between and it helps people progress better. Leela, your comments are so helpful. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh, my comments are in reference to my own learning experience. Yes. And I love when people share their learning experience. So definitely share that here uh, because it helps. It helps us to see what works, what doesn't work. When we kind of share our collective experiences, that's how we can gather, okay, that really worked. That didn't work. Um, that's why I'm sharing this toolkit and this training program. This is what worked for me after decades of teaching, after dozens of students. Um, this is what worked well for me. It, but I love learning new things. I think that things can always be fine-tuned. And, and, and if there are things that we can do to better the crochet experience, Yes, let's do that. So that's why I love having conversations like that. Leela, as a public school teacher and a good service administrator, I taught the basic, uh, the basics applicable to each experience. Yeah, there you go. All right, and the last comment that I see here, man, we've really gone through a lot. I love this. Leela, I look forward to receiving the resources you have mentioned here. I will look into the classes. And that's an excellent last comment to have. Thank you, Leela. Yeah, so again, guys, this was three tips, uh, three tips, three things, three tips every crochet teacher should do. This is just, this is my opinion based on decades of trial and error and students. Um, it's things like this that help me to bring forth the American Crochet Association. Uh, I love that crochet has been my career. I've had so much trial and error, and I feel like that there are some things that I've done that have worked more times than not. So uh, I've created these resources to help other people pass crochet through the generations in better hands than we found it. So in the comments and also in the video description, you guys are going to find this article. This article goes in greater detail and depth about everything that I've talked about here today. It gives you those three tips. And when you scroll all the way to the bottom, you guys will be able to see um, that um, I do have some additional information about the workshops that I mentioned. There's the crochet lesson toolkit. It's just the patterns. So if you just want the patterns to teach crochet, here it is. This is the syllabus. It's everything that I mentioned. If you want all of the patterns, and a ton of extra information about how to teach, what the teaching process is, 
so many more tips and resources and videos and chats just like this, then you may want to come on over and check out the Crochet Instructor Training Program. Again, I'm going to link that too. So three different things, an article, a toolkit, and a Crochet Instructor Training Program. I would love to make this a broader conversation. So again, whether you guys are watching live or in the replay, go on ahead and drop your comments and your feedback here. Um, as I see those, I'll get right back to them. If you guys enjoyed this and you learned something, or if you have something to share or add to this conversation, leave me a comment. Um, also come on over and join our group on Facebook. It's group colon American Crochet Association. We can have a broader conversation, a live conversation, kind of a, an evolving conversation on this. If you have questions, comments, feedback, we can also have that there. If you guys found this valuable and you think it'll make it, it'll make a difference in your crochet spaces, definitely tag a crochet friend in the comments or share this video in at least one place you enjoy crochet if you think they'll get some value out of it too. All right, everybody, this was fantastic. Oh my gosh, final shout out to one of my favorite crochet YouTubers, Dana's Wonderlust Crochet. Always so good to see you here. Uh, again, one of my favorite and, you know, favorite crochet YouTubers to, to follow. So shout out to you, Dana. All right, guys. And on that note, that's all I have for you guys today. It has been a pleasure to be here. I love conversations like this. So keep them going. All right. Peace, love, crochet. I'll see you guys in the community. Bye-bye.